Okay, our next presenters are Bill and Venny Osborne, and they were willing to go to Thailand and try something they've never tried before, which is video editing and shooting and all that kind of stuff, to head up the studio that, uh, that is being built, that has been built, and it's just waiting for funds to finish out the, the pay off the debt and, and equip the whole thing. But in the meantime, well, you've got a whole story about how that's come about. So, Bill and Venny, thank you so much. Let's, uh, let's kneel for prayer. Father in heaven, we have been blessed so much today from what we've already heard about the work that is going on in your vineyard for those dedicated... Uh, for the stories of how Christ has miraculously worked in the lives of not only the missionaries, but those that are being ministered to. Father, we pray as we uh, speak a little bit about the studio and the work that we will be doing over there, that it will be uh, so little of us, but so much of you. Because really, Father, the reason we are all here is because of you. To praise your name, to glorify your name and to uh, spread the good news uh, to those that uh, don't have that, those opportunities. So, Father, we just pray that your Holy Spirit will be in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to uh, tell you maybe a little bit different uh, than what the stories that you have been told there uh, these people that you've heard are true missionaries, Ben and Gail and the boys and the Adams family there that are out there on the front lines. Uh, we do work in a, in a pretty comfortable studio there. Uh, we'd also like to share you, uh, with you just a little bit, and we'll do it just briefly, because I think there are probably people out there that may be contemplating some service or uh, doing missionary work there. And... Uh, Maybe a little bit of our story of how we even ended up there would be of encouragement to you. I, I, I need to tell you that I'm an old man, and uh, I'd worked in Portland, Oregon for 32 years and retired to the beautiful little community of Kettle Falls, Washington. We had a home out there on Lake Roosevelt there, overlooking the lake. We could watch the eagles flying there. Uh, we built a deck on the back of our house that just overlooked the lake. It, the pine trees, the, the wind would be blowing through the pine trees. And I thought, I have arrived. The Lord is good. He's brought me here. And, and I'll spend the rest of my years sitting on my deck, listening to the wind, watching nature, and just enjoying retirement years there. And God said, oh, not quite. And so uh, those things are all gone but it's been replaced with something that is really far better. And, uh, and Vinny will tell you a little bit about that journey there. Uh, I d One other thing I'd like to just mention, I, I see some friends here from, from Kettle Falls, many friends from Thailand. These are the people that are so important to us. And uh, our friends from Kettle Falls, those that you around the Colville, Kettle Falls area, last week we... Uh, last Sabbath, we attended a memorial service for a little 14-year-old girl who had drowned in the Kettle River there. And you know, as I was sitting there in that memorial service, it was a beautiful, beautiful service. It was, a, it was just a wonderful service. And the good thing about it in this service was that this little girl who we had known for a long time and was, was uh, good friends with our grandson who had just about as much energy, maybe more, than, than Laura had had there, uh, that Laura, just two weeks before her accident, had been baptized and changed completely there. And you know, at that memorial service, there were 400 people that attended. Uh, Ron Reeves told me that was the largest uh, uh, group of people that had ever been in the Kettle Falls Church. 400 people there to to not only mourn, but to celebrate the life of this little 14-year-old girl. And I couldn't help but sit, as I was sitting there, thinking about my experience in Thailand, 
14-year-old children over there, many who have never, never known the name of Jesus, many who parents have sold them off to flesh markets or wherever they could, uh, many of them dying every day without not only 400 people recognizing their death, but never, never, never hearing about the wonderful gospel that we take you know, just for granted there so much. But I know that there's one person that was there each, with each one of those children, and it's, it's, it's the Jesus that we serve. And, uh, you know, that puts tremendous responsibility. I don't know how much responsibility that puts on us. Uh, when when uh, those of you that have been in the mission field or those that are contemplating going, uh, it's, hard to, it's hard to put value on a soul. Heaven was willing to pour out all of heaven for just one soul there. And sometimes we get so involved in the things that we're doing here that we forget how precious these, uh, these people are to Jesus. And in where we are in Thailand, I don't know that anybody has mentioned that. that uh, it, there's about 66 million people in Thailand, and I, throughout Southeast Asia, I, I don't know what the population is, but in Thailand, uh, there are less than half of 1% are Christians. Those, that's not Adventist folks, that's Christians. And uh, it, it, it's, it, it's tough. Uh, in fact, a ministry that my mother has, has um, donated when she passes on there, donated her home to there, uh, came to visit her recently and, uh, and told her, well, we, we would never go to Thailand. The work is just too hard there. Well, that's, you know, if I read my Bible right, and uh, the first angel's message is this gospel, you know, the gospel, the angel flying with the heavenly gospel to preach to every kindred, nation, tribe, and people. I mean, that takes in all the people groups of Thailand. Uh, I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll just write, on write up front clear one kind of misconception there, and, and I get in trouble when I do this, and believe me, I mean no disrespect. You know, these, the, the ministries that our church uh, uh, has that goes out and, and preaches the message there uh, all over the world, you know, th these are wonderful messages, and people are being one to the Lord, but, you know, I sat down uh, at my mom's house, and I took out a little brochure uh, that, that, well, I'll tell you, that 3ABN puts out there, and I love 3ABN, by the way. I, that, again, I, I mean no disrespect, but in that brochure, it had this pretty picture of satellite coverage. It had circles. I believe it was eight circles around the world, and the caption was that uh, we are reaching the whole world, and it mentioned 1.5 billion people there that were being reached with the gospel. And I and and praise the Lord for that. But I, you know, the, the one thing that is not mentioned is where the circle where I am, and John referred to, to that a little earlier today. That ministry is is not as effective as it is in America because nobody speaks English around me there. Uh, they don't hear the message. It'd be like me coming up here this uh, today, and speaking in the Hmong language. And saying I'm reaching you with the gospel, I could preach. Boy, I could preach for, you know, the next eight or ten hours. And would I really be reaching you? Not, not so sure about that. There. So there's there's work for all of us. And don't ever think for a minute that that, that uh, we don't need workers or anything like that because the the gospel is going all going out all over the world. There, we need we need people that are dedicated to to go out and to spread this gospel to the people groups. Our hope, our dream through all of this is that we're going to be able to produce television programming someday, and we're going to do it in 28 different languages there. And we just pray that the Lord will bless that. Now, how in the world did somebody like me who hates change, you know, if, if I, when Benny and I got married, if I had my way, we'd still be living in the little 1,000 square foot uh, manufactured home that my son and I had been living in when she came into my life. And uh, it got to the point one day where she said, it's either 
you know, it's either find something else or find a new wife. She, she wasn't serious, I don't think. But that's how much I, I hate change. So how, how I ended up in Thailand, maybe my wife can tell that a little bit better than me. We did manage to find a, a, a larger home. We had four children at, in the home at that time. And uh, yeah, we were working our heads off and not getting anywhere spiritually. And um, someone turned me on to Dave Westbrook's ministry. I don't know, how, how many have heard of Dave Westbrook? Yeah, okay, lots of you. Well, we were impressed to read the Out of the Country, or the Country Living book by Ellen White in chronological order. And we were convinced that we were not to be living in the city any longer. And so that was our goal to get out of the city and out of debt. And we, within a two year period, we were able to accomplish that. And like Bill said, we were just thinking life was so good. We, we found ourselves in the country and we were watching eagles fly over our heads and, and the great Lake Roosevelt sat in our backyard there and it was just amazing. And, and we grew spiritually because we had more time to spend with God in nature and we had a wonderful church family that was just so loving and we really grew and enjoyed that time. Um, then knowing that we had a couple of things that we hadn't accomplished when we moved into this home on the river, and that is um, it was affiliated with an association. Even though it was 13 miles out of any little burg, it had um, dues that came around every year, and we were on a shared water line where we had to pay our water. Well, we knew that we wanted to be self-sufficient, and so we had an opportunity to join hands with another couple up on a piece of property uh, that would be considered the ideal uh, mountainous home that Ellen White talks about. And it's a off the grid kind of thing. So we said, yeah, we're interested. And so we started building a small house on that property while we still maintained the other house on the, on the lake there. And um, by the way, this is this is our first day at, at faith camp this year. In fact, it's our first time ever at faith camp. We've never been to one. But this couple that we had joined hands with came to faith camp in 2008 or 9, summer of 2009. And they came back from faith camp and they said, we are impressed that we need to go to Thailand and wouldn't you like to come with us? <laughs> and our, I was like, what? <laughs> really? And yeah, they said, we're just so many, encouraged. Many tears, by the way, from this, <laughs> who had thought that she was going to hang her, her hat up there on the mountain, for, that this is where God wanted her to be. And this was a tough decision for Benny to make. Yes, but and, and Bill has mentioned that he's not a man of um, decided change. He likes to just you know, make no changes, and I've been kind of the mover and the shaker in the family, and, and I, I really didn't want this change, and so I just had to give it to the Lord, and I said, Lord, if, if you're impressing Bill, my husband, to go to Thailand, I need to be willing to do what he's impressed to do at this time, and he's always kind of had a, a missionary heart. He, he uh, had always sort of dreamed about doing that when he was younger. But here he, he was in his 60s, and he was going to Thailand, and he made the decision. And so we uh, got it all together, and, and I have to tell you a little story about the house that we had to sell before we left, the, the property on the lake had to sell. And so Bill was in town one day uh, soliciting real estate agents and talking to them, getting a feel of how much they're going to put into their effort of selling this home that needed to go quickly. And so he was at one real estate agent telling his story, and he says, yeah, I'm so interested in selling. I, I'd be even willing to just let all the furnishings go with the home if you could sell it. Well, he went to another agent and uh, told the same story there, and this other agent kind of proved that he was going to do the work for us, and so Bill went with that agent. Well, we were encouraged. He, he seemed to be, be very hardworking and and we had a few people coming through, and that was great. And, and then um, about four weeks after it was listed, he, this real estate agent of ours was called by this other agent that Bill had been in the office of 
prior, and she said, I overheard your, this, the seller say that he would sell this home with everything furnished in it. And she said, is that true to our agent? And he said, well, he says, I didn't list it that way, but I do think I rem remember him saying something to that effect, and I'll give him a call. And so he gave Bill a call, and Bill confirmed that, yes, we'd be willing to sell everything. So we did, and... Um, walked away with, we didn't have to pack a lot of stuff. I mean, they wanted our bedding, our towels, our, you know, everything. Our silverware, everything. So it was a pretty easy move. We uh, actually put all our belongings in, into the suitcases, just about. We had a couple of boxes that we packed away. But, you know, this is the way the Lord works because it really, really uh, got us out from some encumbrances. We didn't know where we were going to store all this stuff. Um, to, and then the other thing that we needed to do, and I, I, I've got to share this with you. Uh, I had, in, in my 32 years, I'd, I'd accumulated a, a uh, retirement fund there. And I used to lay in bed at night thinking about what I was going to do with that retirement fund. I, would it, you know, would the interest be enough to, that we could live on it with Social Security and we could go on year after year and finally hand it all over to our kids someday there? And, uh, you know, the Lord, the Lord uh, said, well, you know, I need that for the work there, that retirement fund. And, you know what, I've got to tell you, the, the retirement fund is gone now. I know some other, some other folks have gone through something like that. So have the worries. You know, I, I used to, how was that retirement fund going to provide for me when I have the God of the universe now? That, that is going to take care of all of my needs. He watches the sparrows and the flowers. He'll certainly, he'll certainly, he'll certainly watch over for me. So, you know, it's kind of a thing of a lot of times we, we say that Jesus is going to come soon. You know, in, in, in Matthew 24, the signs of his coming, you know, it talks about earthquakes and pestilence. Man, since we've been in Thailand, there's been an earthquake in Japan. There was an earthquake in New Zealand. Uh, st uh, cities in the United States have been blown away by tornadoes. But, you know, if you, rem if you look at those very, very closely there, uh, and, and you read the, 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 the text there, it says these things are only the beginning of sorrows, and the end is not yet. But down in verse, what is it, verse 14, not 14, or no, it's, anyway. You'll, you know the verse there that says, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, and then the end will come. And what we're seeing happening in Thailand, which has been closed for so long there, and the other countries over there, this is a sign of Jesus coming there. And if we believe that, we should be willing, I believe, to put everything on the altar. I mean, we can't take it with us there. And when it says, lay up treasure in heaven, the children at the Adams School, the, the people that Gail works with, uh, the Rawlings family is here, the Steck family who's going to go over there this first time there to be principals of the school there with these children. These are the jewels that are going to make up God's kingdom there. And that's what we'll celebrate for not the few years here, but throughout all eternity, to think that God would give us the privilege of being able to uh, be a part of that is almost amazing there. Well, so we arrived in Thailand in December of 2009, and we had talked with John and Natalie Wood, and Bill's official title, I think, was something like director of the studio. Oh, oh yeah, still there, the studio. And I was the coordinator for scheduling. And boy, that sounded impressive. <laughs> And so we said, yeah, okay, we're ready. And so we went over and, well, we, we didn't really have a job to jump into, so to speak, because the studio wasn't really up and running. It was a studio. It was there, and it needed equipment and uh, sets built and furniture and all these things. And so... We took a little time to kind of adjust to the culture and get our own uh, living quarters set up. And uh, I even have a wash machine, and my whole village are probably very envious of me because all the ladies in the village do their laundry down at the creek. Um, and so we, we don't have it so bad like the Adams family. You know, they still wash in the creek, I think. But um, 
we just had time to figure out how, what our transportation was going to be, and we decided we would do the scooter route. So we each have a scooter. They're little 125s, and I grew up on dirt bikes, motocross bikes out in the boondocks. My dad would take us out each Sunday, so I, I knew how to ride a motorcycle. I was like, yeah, let's do this. And um, it was a whole other issue to walk, to drive into Chiang Mai when there's just hundreds of motorcycles everywhere and the traffic is going every which way and you're just scared to death. You can't take your eye off the road because the people are crossing in front of you and, and it was a whole new experience anyway. And she had an accident there. In fact, most of the missionaries were having accidents about the same time. Uh, uh, Bradley was the the principal of the school. His wife was in an accident there. Um, some people that were working for Hope for Bangkok there, not Hope for Bangkok. The um, well, anyway, the 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 Buddhist center, oh. the Buddhist center, right. the Griswolds. Buddhist yeah, they, they were they were in an accident. A dog had run out in front of Vinny, and her scooter went over and fell on top of her there and. Her, our grandson was on the back of it there, and I, it just scared the daylights. I was riding behind them there. And, you know, the road that we were riding is a, is a pretty busy road. And during that time that we it took to get probably three or four minutes, uh, get that, get that uh, scooter off of her there, uh, not a single car came by there. And uh, we were able to get her off there and get her to the hospital, and, and, and she recovered. It just... You know, the Lord was really, really good in, in that situation there also. So, you know, the Lord, the Lord takes care of his own. Can you make this full size? Okay. Okay, so we got ourselves settled, and we got our transportation, and, and then Bill was um, encouraged to get some powerful software called Final Cut Pro, and he made it his job every day to go to the studio and learn... We could get online internet there because Pastor Pramore has a connection. So he could get online and he could do tutorials online on how to edit something he'd never done before. Um, but he spent eight hours every day faithfully doing that. And when, when he came to a point he felt pretty confident about what he was learning, um, we were on our knees praying, Lord, okay, what, we're here. We, we need you to impress us on what you want us to do. We, we, um, we had studied Thai for about three months at that point and felt too old to really comprehend the, the whole uh, Thailand um, is, or Thai is a very difficult language. We could do a few words and a little bit of conversational, but we knew we weren't going to really be fluent. So pray, talking to the Lord, he, he all of a sudden moved in our direction, and, and Bill was on the internet looking at an email that came across from Ralph Bruin, and then we got an email the same day from Shannon Green, who said, hey, you guys interested in doing a video of, of Ralph Bruin? And, and we looked at each other and said, yeah, we're ready. <laughs> I'd never take, I'd never even touched a video camera before. And uh, I finally, I got the manual out, real quick read, you know. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we were packed and ready to go to his evangelistic ser service, a, a one-week um, presentation in Fong, and we uh, took our first bus trip on, on the Thai bus system, and we had no idea what we were doing, and we didn't communicate that well. And so somebody said, oh, yeah, just go down to Maytang, and we had all this luggage and our camera equipment and everything. They said, we think you can catch a bus from somewhere over there. So we did the somewhere over there, and we waited and waited and waited like three hours, and we saw buses going by and that said Fang on them, and oh, or Fong, however you say it. I said, we've done something wrong, and finally somebody flagged down a bus for us, and we got on that thing, and it was so jam-packed that we just barely could squeeze through the aisle, and they were sitting three deep on a two-seater bench, and... Um, they threw our luggage and all of our equipment underneath the bus, and we said, oh, Lord, thank you. We're going to make it after all, I guess. And so we just had a, a praise the Lord time there of, of thinking we could actually make a difference. I'm going to show you a couple of pictures. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
I've got to tell you, my, my experience has been in, in video here. And so we put together a, a little bit of a slideshow here. Um, And, and in, in, the, in a couple of minutes of, of the dorm there. And uh, so we just have a, a couple of slides that we'll show you there. I, I want to tell you, even though Vinny told you a little bit about the, uh, our titles and things like that, if, if we did a video and we put the credits, it would say something like, you know, director, Bill and Vinnie Osborne, producer, Bill and Vinnie Osborne, camera person, Bill and Vinnie Osborne, <laughs> editor, Bill and Vinnie Osborne. Uh, if you're starting to kind of get the message here, any of you that anybody that would have an interest in becoming part of the Bill and Vinnie Osborne team, uh, I, you would be welcome with open arms. In fact, we even have a home for you. Uh, we, we've, we've kept that open, hoping that somebody would, would come along there someday and join the team. And I want to tell you, before we start this, it's going to be exciting. Uh, and, and I'll tell you just real briefly why I know this. Just a few months ago, John and David Gates came to Bangkok there. And they did a presentation at, at the TAM in Bangkok, the mission there, uh, to a group of people from Bangkok, many of which were businessmen, I believe, about getting the satellite, getting on TV there. And of course, this is what we were going for. You know, if this message, this message could go around Asia there because everybody over there has television sets, even the very, very poor people, the, our next door neighbors in the village there we have, they don't have any furniture in the house, but out in the garage, there is one television there and they sit around there at night and they watch that television. And this is pretty typical. Just think of if we could get Christian programming out there and so, anyway, David, David and John presented this to them, and it was, uh, you know, I, w I was thrilled to hear this. Well, things kind of went al along there, and we, we kind of quit hearing about this. And, and the Lord to talked to me one night, because I had held all along that I couldn't do anything until the studio was finished. Now, the studio is a beautiful studio, and it's almost done. But we have run out of funding. We've run out of people to kind of help with that. And so we were really doing nothing. And the Lord woke me up at night there. And he said, you know, this is not your work. You know, you don't need to worry about this. This is my work. You do what you can with what you have and let me do the rest. And this was vivid in my mind. This was absolutely vivid. And I got up the next day and... and I got to thinking about this, and all of a sudden, I said, okay, no more worrying about that studio. If that studio is never done, I don't care. If, if, if we don't get people, it's not my problem. You know, this is the Lord's problem. He's made that clear. And within just a very, very short time, uh, one problem that we had was solved. Uh, we were trying to, we were trying to uh, tape, uh, do uh, tel for television, all the sermons that were going on at Chiang Mai Adventist Academy, which is a very, very dynamic school. And their sound system is not that great. Their microphones, you know, I, I look at, boy, I look at these microphones back here and the, and the earphones and stuff. If, if I had earphones like that, I, the earphones I've got that I use over there cost me 90 baht, which is about $3. And uh, you, you can get them over here too. Your kids probably get them for toys there to use them there. But anyway, that doesn't matter because, you know, the Lord is doing wonderful things here for me. And, and again, at, at the school, week after week, I was doing video there and I was taking, I was going through and doing the editing there. And the, the audio, I got to tell you, was just garbage. It was not something you would listen to or anybody else would want to listen to. And then, I, you know, I, so I thought about that. What am I going to do? Well, bless their hearts, there's a little, little church down in Central Point, Oregon, down there that had heard us talk. And the reason they heard us talk is because my mom goes to that church. And, of course, when Bill comes home, you know, he's, they're not going to get by without hearing me say something there. And they got together, and they made a donation there, and we got two new microphones. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the, the audio that we had is just... I mean, it's quality stuff there, and better better than I could ever I could ever do, you know, on my own. There, I knew the Lord was behind that there, and just shortly after that, then 
we started having these opportunities. Um, many of you may know Emmanuel Beck. Uh, in, in, within two weeks, we found out that we were going to be doing a series, uh, videoing the series of Emmanuel Beck, 24, on Re a Revelation Seminar there in, in Chiang Mai. Uh, and we did. Uh, Venny and I were, were the camera people again there. Not, not, so, not like this, more like this one over here without, without the tripod. Uh, but you know what? Those things came out, those, those videos came out beautiful. And they're not going out on TV yet. They're saved. They will go out someday. But they are going out in DVDs all over Thailand now. Well, during this, during this meeting, uh, another opportunity came. There, there was a conflict here right in the middle of this series that was going on that we were videoing there. Uh, Peter Gregory came over. And he was going to the Crin camp meeting there. And they needed somebody to, they, Pastor Pomore wanted somebody out there. Well, we borrowed, we borrowed one camera and we, Pastor Pomore bought a, brought another camera there. And Vinny became the sole camera person. She ran two cameras in Chiang Mai. And I went to Corinne camp meeting and did a series with Peter Gregory that we're just now producing that's going to go out all over Thailand. Uh, in, 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 yeah, and that's in the Corinne language there. We, since we have left, or just before we left there, we made arrangements with a pastor in Chiang Mai that can speak five different languages who says, oh, I got to work with you folks there. You know, you just let me know when to come down there and we'll start doing programming in there. Uh, and, and a doctor, Dr. A from Bangkok, it has uh, uh, agreed to come up and do health lectures the very, very, very receptive. The people of Thailand are receptive to anything to have to do with health there. Just a, just a way to open a door. A lady from Lampang who has a, has, she has her own radio station. I, I don't know how she does it. She does all the buttons while she's sitting there doing her programming there. And she is getting the message out there. People are, people are writing into her for Bible studies and things all of the time there. She has agreed to be on our newly formed, I mean, we're getting big time now, so we're going to have a board at the All Asia TV studio there. Uh, things are moving fast, so we, we can't do this all by ourselves. Uh, again, you know, the, the Bible says that the gospel will be preached to all the world before Jesus comes. And this includes Thailand there. And, you know, if, if people are dying all the time, never knowing about Jesus, you know, we could be here for a while longer. The Lord is not going to let that happen. And, and uh, if he can, man, if he can use, I don't know how to say this, if he can use two people like Vinny and me, who uh, she had never touched a camera, she had never touched a video camera. I got to tell you, all the, our married life, she is the camera person there because I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even pick one up there. And uh, we've, we've learned things, a lot of things the hard way there, but we've learned uh, through all of this that God is good. And that if, 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 if we want to serve him, if we want to be in his service there, that he provides the means. A, a, a promise that we claim all the time there. First Corinthians, or Second Corinthians, I'm sorry, Second Corinthians 12, 9. And in my Bible, it's the red part of the verse there that says, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Now, the weaker you are, there are no excuses for not being involved in, in missionary work, whether if it's not in Thailand, if it's not in Southeast Asia, if it's not in India, there is no reason why we cannot be missionaries wherever we are. The weaker we are, the stronger Jesus and God is. And so there are no excuses uh, for any of us. And certainly for us, that has been manifest over and over and over again. You know, we'd like to come home. I, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and tell you we wouldn't like to come home. Uh, we have grandchildren. One of them spent the year with us over there, which was an experience for Vinny, homeschooling. Uh, very strong-willed child. Uh, we have family. 
But you know, the, 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 the most important thing is God has given us a mission to do right now. And uh, we're planning on going back over there for another year. At the end of that year, we, we'd like to come home. But if, if that doesn't happen, that's okay. God's in charge, and we're willing to just to ride this thing out. It's almost like being on a roller coaster, you know, the end times. You know, sometimes you just, you have no control over where you're going. You just hang on, enjoy, enjoy the ride. And that's what Vinny and I are doing right now. We're just kind of hanging on and, and enjoying the ride there. Uh, I think that's a good stopping point. Well, I, we were going to go to about 15 after. We got three minutes. Can I tell you one miracle story? Just one, one, one quick miracle story. And then it, uh, I think there are brochures back there on the studio there. Uh, we, would, we would really, really, really love you to, to become involved, uh, either personally, uh, and if not with us, you know, we'd be perfectly happy if support would come in for Gail or, or for, the, for the Sunshine Orchard down there. I mean, we'd be tickle pink if we never got a penny, but these people had more money than they, they knew what to do with. We know that if, if God wants us to have the money or the, our needs. If he wants us to have beautiful cameras, uh, you, sh you, know, you, you should see a production truck, maybe a pickup or something. You know, on our, on our scooters, when John was over there, he was sort of amazed. When we go out and go on location, which we do all over Thailand, on our scooters there, we will, each, each scooter, we will put two tripods, two cameras, computer, and our suitcases. And when you ride through the traffic down to Chiang Mai there, that can become a pretty hair-raising experience. The story. My mother does not want me in Thailand. You know, I'm 65 years old almost, and uh, she'd still like to be folding my socks and putting them in the drawer for me. Uh, and she's one of these, you know, you know, the work's almost being done, Bill. Why do you even have to be there? I mean, this, the gospel's going all over the world. And I go through this week after week. I talk to her on Skype. If I didn't call her on Skype, then she would not live very long, I, I, I don't think. And uh, she, she's a person that has been faithful to the Lord all of her life. She, she supports four ministries with her money. And it's over 50% of what she has coming in. And the Lord has taken care of her. And one day we were on Skype there having one of these conversations. And she realized after she had heard from this one ministry that they didn't come to Thailand because the work was so hard. This, this sort of touched a sour note in her there. And, and so the next week when we, she called on Skype, she said, Bill, I'm going to quit giving my money to these other ministries, and I'm going to give it to you. And I says, Mom, don't do that. You've been, you, know, you don't have to do that. You've been, you've been uh, serving so faithfully these ministries for so long. They probably wouldn't go broke if you didn't. But, you know, you, you, you have the habit of doing this there. I, and she says, well, I really think I should support you. And I said, let's do this, Mom. I said, if God wants you to help us, then he'll provide a way for you there. He'll provide some means. And uh, if he does, then you can help us. If not, you just keep supporting your ministries there. Called her up the next week. And she was just all bubbly there. And she says, you'll never guess what happened. She said, I, I got my bank statement back, and there was money in there that I couldn't account for. And I didn't know what it was, so I went to the bank immediately, and they said, well, this is from Social Security. Well, she didn't know anything about Social Security. She knew my stepfather had passed away a couple of years ago there, and that she was getting his Social Security there. And uh, so she thought maybe it was somebody that was just trying to scam her a little bit there. So she got a hold of Social Security, and they said, no, this appears to be your lucky day. And we don't know how this happened there, but over 25 years ago, my stepdad had been part of a claim there, a, a kind of a disability claim there because of the work that he was doing. And this had just gotten lost in the system there somewhere. And it had just so happened that the week that we had talked about this, she received a check in the mail in her, in, that went right directly to her bank account for $11,000. <laughs> now, if that's, not, if that's not the way the Lord works, you know, I'll pour you out a blessing that there won't be room enough to support, you know, to, to receive it there. 
you know, if you pray like this, God wants to come back. He wants to take us all home. He not only wants us, he wants, he wants those children, those people in Thailand that have never heard the name of Jesus before. Uh, he wants them all to be with them there. He's, he, he's not going to fail you, uh, but it does take sometimes a little faith. It takes that first step, and then the next step gets maybe a little easier and a little easier there until pretty soon we're just living by nothing but faith. And this is the kind of faith that we're going to have to live with uh, just before Jesus comes because we won't be able to see uh, any, any physical means of, of getting away from, from where we are. I, I just pray, you know, I just pray that uh, the Lord will not only impress on us our work. Yeah, again, I just want to say you don't have to come to Thailand. It would be nice for you to come to Thailand and help us out the studio there or, or whatever. But we can all be missionaries wherever we are because this gospel is going to go and Jesus is going to come. And we'll be reunited with all those, the little 14-year-old girl that I told you about earlier there. We'll see Laura in heaven. We'll see some of these children in Thailand. You know, there will be people in heaven that never heard the name of Jesus. Uh, much more difficult, I believe. Uh, but uh, with your help, with our persistence, and with a loving God, this message is going to get out through all of, all of Thailand and all of Southeast Asia. God bless you all. John, do you have anything that you need to say before? Oh, real quick, the pictures, okay. This was one of our uh, first uh, week-long evangelistic series that we shot with uh, Rhines, and this was for the Hmong tribe, and they speak their own language again. This is Hmong in Thailand, and this is in the high country. Um, you can't really get the perspective, but we're pretty high up at this point. This is the way they cooked us meal, our meal. Each evening we would go up to the top where they met and they would prepare a uh, dinner for all of us. And this is Pastor, well, he's, he's actually not a, a pastor. He's a lay person. This is uh, Dolores Ryan and Ralph Ryan. He spoke here. He spoke here last year. Mm -hmm. They're from Virginia. This is the church that we met in, and those are shutters on the windows, but there's no screens, and so every night when the fluorescent lighting would come on after dark, of course, all the bugs would come out, and they would just buzz around, and we'd, we'd capture them on film. It was no big deal. We, we didn't have enough light in there to, to even shoot a video there, and we bought them a fluorescent light that cost, oh, I don't know, it was, it was just a few dollars there. And they were so excited to have a light in their church. I mean, they didn't have a light in their church at, at all there. So they were, they were really excited there. These are the Hmong ladies preparing food again. They're just so loving. We, we had such a good time learning about this culture. And the, they're just warm people. We couldn't converse with them. Um, but they were just so loving to us and smiled all the time. This was one of the baptisms that, that happened right after those meetings, but it wasn't really part of the meetings. This young gal had been studying to be baptized, and this pastor is actually from Chiang Rai, and he had come down to baptize her. Okay, this is the Lahu Church. Again, another um, tribe. The Lahu uh, live on the lower part of the land, and they are farmers. Uh, they do a lot of fruit growing. And um, the children, there were tons of children to this meeting. We aren't really sure if the mothers all said, go to the meeting and they'll take care of you or what, because there wasn't, there wasn't enough mothers there for all the children that arrived. I, I'm quite sure of that. Grandpa Bill every night got presents from these kids. They would pick up, they would pick up fruit that had rotted on the ground and, and brought it to Grandpa there so he would have something to eat. <laughs> So we, we, we just sort of fell in love with this group of, of children, and so Bill and I went to this, the local market and said, what can we get to give to the kids just for a present? And so we, we bought them all a little trinket and gave that out one of the evenings. They were so thrilled. Okay. This lady was very interesting. I don't 
have a clue how old she is. Probably not nearly as old as she looks. Um, but she just wanted her picture taken. Um, we had, back at the Chiang Mai Academy, there is a radio station run there by um, a Thai lady, and she speaks very good English. She asked that I would do a workshop with her, and so I video workshopped her training a group of the Academy kids on how to give a health workshop the next day. And the training session that I recorded for her, we made a DVD, and she can pass that out now to other workers that can do the same thing that, that you're seeing here. They did a a step-by-step -step health workshop where they got their weight done and their height and their um, blood pressure taken and then they got some massage therapy and it was it was a very fun interesting day and then they did a health health nugget and this is um, Ralph and Dolores again and the the pastor here is very young but he is just so on fire for the Lord he he can speak the Hmong language because he is Hmong, but he also speaks Thai very fluently. And you find that a lot in the, in the young pastors. They speak probably three languages as kind of a rule. There may be some questions from the audience for Bill and Vinny um, about your extraordinary experience. Uh, it sounds like you have to have a degree in videography to do this work. <laughs> I think it would be helpful. If, if you don't, you better have somebody up ahead, upstairs watching over you there because uh, it, it could be a long process. It's not something I would recommend anybody just do on their own. Just... Uh, yeah, he's, he's teasing. You don't need a videography degree. Okay. Yeah, it, no, it's, it's, something it's something that you learn. Yes, but, and if the Lord is good, it helps a whole lot there. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's just take one or two questions, and then we need to go prepare for Sabbath. You see a question over, way over where? Oh, yes. Looking at this picture, I'm wondering how large is this studio? Six sets made on. I, I don't know the dimensions of the studio. I know that the, the, the actual studio where, where we'll be putting uh, putting up the sets. And by the way, the first thing we do when we get back to Thailand, we have the money now to do two sets. We're, we're not going to wait. We're going to start doing programming the day we get back there and getting those sets built. So, but the, the studio itself would be larger where we have the sets than this, this church uh, right. auditorium right here. Six, six sets could go in there. About six sets would go in there. The studio actually was originally designed to reach all of Southeast Asia, which is about a quarter of the world's population. That's a lot, a lot of people. But there's so many languages in there that we wanted to have multiple sets. The idea originally was that somebody from an unreached people group that doesn't have a Bible in their language, you know, it takes maybe 10 to 20 years to convert, a, to translate a Bible into their language, and then a lot of the people don't even read their own language. But with this, a pastor or somebody from that language, their one person converted can come in and share the gospel and go home with a DVD. So the idea is to have a team of technicians here, and they may not be able to speak all those languages, but somebody can come in from a new language group, present the gospel in their language, and then take back a VCD or DVD and hand out and be able to evangelize a great number of people and overcome the illiteracy and all that kind of stuff, plus the satellite. I mean, a lot of people come from China, come down to Thailand to get their training and stuff, and it's illegal to do this kind of studio and, tele and uh, religious television programming in China, so they can come here and do it here, and then we can broadcast it into China. So this kind of has a big thing, and when I was originally designing it, I was thinking, well, let's just make it small. But then when I got out there, I was like, this is for God. And this is for a lot of people. And this is for people that have, I mean, the evangelistic series that you did with Emmanuel Beck, that's the second evangelistic series ever taped in the Thai language, ever. And that's, you know, that's just not right. So we said, let's make it big, and I'm finding out from Tim who his studio in, in Cambodia is almost an exact replica of this one, except it's better, because he did it after us. <laughs> in some ways, it's better. <laughs> but he's telling me just today that it's not big enough, so we're going to have to work on that. But anyway, it's got some land there that we can expand, and, and it's right there at a, tel at a uh, medical training center, 
And so we've got the health aspect right there. We've got, uh, and uh, right over the hill from the academy. Um, I'm excited about it. Yeah, any other questions? Otherwise, we'll call it a wrap and prepare for Sabbath. If, if you would be, anybody would be interested in our, our website there, whatever, if we'll be here. If you just ask us, we'll, you can read our newsletters and things and keep abreast of what's, what's going on. There is a brochure out there and bro with that. Okay. And um, you can uh, go to the jesusforasia.org website and get more information about that. So, okay. I'll just pray for you. Okay. Okay. Let's kneel. Father, I want to thank you for Bill and Venny for their willingness to venture into the unknown. Thank you for how you've come through and you've encouraged them and you've given them a new ministry and a vision and the capability to follow up on that vision. And it truly is that you don't call the qualified, but you qualified the called. So, Father, we know that you can do that with anyone, but we thank you for these people. Thank you for their experience, for their wisdom, for their understanding, and for their willingness, Father. And I just pray for thousands more like them, that your word truly can go forth. Um, we pray this for the sake of those that don't know you and don't have the opportunity to know you. The 60,000 that just died in the last 24 hours, Father, we apologize for them. What do we do, Father? And we ask for, for greater courage and for greater willingness to step out, make that first step of faith, because that will, like Bill says, be the only thing that we will have in the future is our faith. But that faith we will find to be a solid rock. You will never leave us nor forsake us as long as we follow you. And whether that be through a sea or a desert, it is a safe path. So we just give you our hearts. We give you our lives like Bill and Vinny have given their retirement years into your hands. Bless them, keep them, fulfill them, and may just give them the joy of bringing people and seeing souls come to your kingdom because of that work. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.